Hi, I'm George. Welcome to GMakes, and this is my Node overview for November 2022, Day 7 and 8, Futuristic Garden. Uh, so you can see what I've uh, come up with here. I went through a couple ideas for this uh, before landing on this. I'm still not 100% happy with it, that says anything. Uh, but I was just running out and I wanted to kind of experiment with this. Um, so uh, let's get right to it. This one's going to be pretty quick because this one really is going to be an overview, not really a tutorial or anything because uh, the base for this, let's see if this will play nicely for me. Yeah, so the base for this, as you can see uh, in this little render, the main part here is actually uh, from Cartesian Carmel, uh, this mini mimic tutorial. So I'll link that in the description and in the I cards. Uh, if you want to learn how to actually make this effect, um, his of course is like uh, the actual effect that he does is it's a like, mimic creature that walks across. This I used it as like some vine kind of things coming out of this like central, I guess it would be a flower or root. Um, but it's the exact same concept, so I'm not going to go too much on how to actually make the effect. Just kind of how I used it and the little things I added at the end and how I kind of controlled the animation. Um, so uh, and as you can see, it's pretty much just that one effect. You can see this is all my nodes for it. Um, so let's just kind of go through them real quickly. So first of all, this grid just is this base grid right here. It's the floor. Um, and then basically there's some points distributed on it. Um, we instance uh, a, I used a, a Bezier segment, Bez, Bezier segment uh, to instance to create the little legs um, just because you can control the shape of those and give some roundness and stuff because it's all geometry nodes. I'm not modeling anything. Um, and then I realized those instances uh, and then we go set position with a mix and some other like vectors. Um, this vector controls the center of where the things come out of it. Um, and then uh, I resampled those curves, reverse them to give a set curve radius um, and then curve to mesh using that set curve radius, subdivided it and then shade smooth, distributed some points and we'll get into that. Um, so how I controlled this, I didn't, you can see I didn't keyframe any of the, uh, the animation for this. I didn't, there's no keyframe animation here. You could do that, be a lot simpler, uh, but I wanted to use this trim curve right here uh, to trim the ends of that path so I can get this expanding animation. Um, but again, I don't want to keyframe anything, so I want to try to do it all procedurally, even though I guess technically keyframes might be procedural because you can move them real easily. Uh, but I don't think they are. Anyway, uh, that aside, uh, I want to use geometry nodes, let's say specifically. Um, so uh, I have the scene time with here with frames. So every frame, uh, it would change the value up here of this trim curve, the end point of it. The start is again that center. And I don't want to mess with that. So uh, first of all, uh, I have a divide here because without that divide, you'll see it just pretty much instantly appears. It goes very, if I get rid of both of these actually, the subtract there too. It doesn't really do anything because uh, first, first thing off, first, that's a weird way to phrase that. Uh, first things first, scene times starts at one and trim curve goes zero to one. So if you start at one and it's using the value of one to dictate how far along on the trim curve you are, you're going to start at full. So uh, it'd be different if I was using the start. If I was using the start, I was pointing in with my hand and not at the screen and not using my mouse. Uh, if I did the start value and I started that at one, that'd be different. But since I'm using the end value and one at the end value is everything completely out, it doesn't work. So uh, to solve that issue, you have to use subtract the value you want. Um, uh, so that sets it back 15 frames. I'm at 30 frames per second, but you can see it's still not quite working. Um, and that's because it is just going too fast. Uh, so we have this set value. So every frame is going to be subtracting one. So the first frame is actually the value of negative, um, whatever. Uh, but it's still moving extremely fast because by the like two, three, because when does this pop out? You see it pops out at, well, 15, because that's when we get back to frame one. And that means that value is at one. So I went ahead and you have to divide your scene time as well after you subtract. So that way it starts at that scene 15, but then it takes until scene whatever, until basically whatever value you put here. So for me, I guess it's 63.4. So I'm just after frame 63, between 63 and 64 is when that reaches the full, uh, when it reaches the, that one value of everything being completely out. So that's basically how that works. Pretty straightforward. Uh, that's a pretty common method I use in a lot of these animations. Um, 
because it's it's very easy way to con to control both when your animation starts and also how fast it takes um, using just geometry nodes, no keyframing or anything. Um, so that idea goes into this last bit of this animation because you see we have these vines all the way out, but then we wait and we can see in both these things. We wait a little bit. Oh, and look what's glowing. It's glowing. We got some little orbs coming out, some little flowers. Um, so that starts. You can see I'm actually going to, I think, put this at 180. Um, just so we get a little more of that animation coming out. You can see they grow and then they eventually stop. Uh, and that is due to, again, we have this after the vines. We have this distribute points on faces, instance points joining back up. Um, so, and that instancing, what we're instancing, uh, is all down here. And it the base thing of that, you have all these fun things, uh, is actually this cone. Because um, I wanted to kind of make it look like flowers. Um, though, of course, they're glowing, so I don't know if that quite works. Um, but we have this uh, cone right here. Um, I deleted some parts of it. Um, actually, no, that's not right. That's what I wanted to be. Uh, I actually have this tulip that I uh, did. So this was my original idea. I wanted to do a whole hologram thing, but my computer is not having it. So I actually uh, just made this tulip. Um, I might do a tutorial on this. It's a lot just to make a single flower. Um, but it's using a lot of uh, curves, resampling them, subdividing. Not really worth it in the long run because you can see they're just glowing now. There's no really form to them. So you just use icospheres is the best way to do it or a cone. This I just had it made already. So I was like, let me use it. Um, but uh, the main bit uh, is that's what's being instanced. We'll pretend they're icospheres. Um, they're glowing. I have a glowing material going. Uh, and then the thing we're controlling actually for these is the scale um, right here of the tulip or the uh, icosphere, whatever you want to make of that itself. So again, um, I'll get, I have clean up these nodes a bit. Uh, we have right here, you can see we have a scene time. We actually have two of them um, and we'll get to why. Uh, but first, uh, we follow this first scene time. Again, it's frames. So going, starting at one uh, and you can see they start just around frame 100 or so. Actually, it's 85, uh, and that's determined by this greater than number. So these are really useful, again, for just using procedural animation with uh, geometry nodes. If you have a greater than, it's going to say once that scene number, the frame number, gets bigger than that number, the animation will start. It's basically doing that subtract thing again. Um, and then if you use a less than node, it will say up until that point will this animation happen, and then it will stop after that uh, frame number. So that's the first thing, just controlling when this animation starts, and it happens to be at frame 85. And then the second one, this scene time, uh, is saying, uh, is controlling, again, kind of when that starts and how long it takes. So you can see if I get rid of this multiply, it starts and then it just appears. Because it's saying, because again, we're multiplying the scale, and I have this minimum set up. Uh, but we have this scale multiplying and it's saying once it reaches uh, frame 85, it's going to take that frame number 85 and plug it into the scale size, um, which is 85 <laughs> uh, or whatever math blender does to, to register that as a vector. Um, but so that's not what we want. We actually want this to expand outwards. So we use this multiply math node going through this scene time again. I guess you could use the same one, but I just did this for whatever reason uh, to this add again, telling it to start. We're subtracting 85 from this. Um, so even if we have this divide going, you can see it now starts at that 85 position and then grows by the scene frame. We don't want that. We again, if I take out this divide, you can see it's just massive off the bat. So this divide is really cutting down how large that scale gets. Uh, and this add is what is uh, dictating that it's going to start at zero at scene 85. It's subtracting that frame. So we actually start at frame one uh, or frame zero if that works out because we're subtracting that greater than value where it actually starts. So we're resetting the start point. That's all that does. Uh, and then this minimum is just because if I didn't have that, you see it keeps growing and I wanted that to stop when it reached a certain size. So I set that to 0.8, and then it just stops when it reaches 0.8. Um, and that's it. That's real simple, even though I went into a lot of explanation. Basically, uh, too long, didn't listen. Uh, we have scene time frames. These could be the same one. 
One feeds into when using this greater than node, saying that once we hit frame 85, uh, we're going to start the animation or start using those frame values. Uh, and the second one saying that um, we're going to uh, set the limit to how fast that uh, animation happens and also when it actually happens. We're going to subtract uh, this greater than value from those frames that we actually start at frame zero. Um, we multiply those together. Together, uh, We set the minimum frame value or like a scale value we want this uh, thing that we're instancing to a, a stop at, what we want to stop at, uh, and that's it. So that's that's how you make those little animating flowers. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the actual animation. And that just outputs um, to it uh, for, let me go to objects, and you'll get a little sneak peek of some of my other stuff. But garden, creature, yes. So again, not too much for the shaders. Uh, we just have a base color here. I've got some wave textures to make these little weird grainy bits. Um, for, uh, this is in the roughness to give it a little more like kind of bark or just weirdness because it's an alien. It's, it's, it's a futuristic plant. Who knows what's actually in this thing. Um, then I have a musgrave texture for that bump again to give it that weird kind of barky, glassy, who knows what it is texture. Um, I have those set to the objects, so the actual geometry nodes. Um, and yes, yeah, so this one was nothing. Um, yeah, and so that's it. That's pretty straightforward. Nothing too special right there. Messed around with, it's actually metallic. So I have that set to one, it's supposed to non-metallic. It's not going to be comp- I like metallic because again, futuristic garden. Who knows what this thing's made of? Uh, put the specular rather high. Had fun with it. Uh, what other textures we got? Creature spots, just an emission texture, nothing too fancy. Um, and then the grass uh, that I actually end up using. Again, nothing too fancy, just a noise texture that has some bump to it to give a little texture, almost like a felt more than an actual grass. Because I just wanted to get something out quickly and this was the idea I had. I don't know. I'm I'm not 100% happy with it, but I like the it. Um, I really like Cartesian Caramel's mimic effect, and I like any use I can find to use it. So uh, there wasn't much for compositing for this. It was just basic, basic, uh, basic glow stuff and whatever. So uh, nothing too fancy there. Uh, this uh, overview has already gone a little bit longer than I uh, wanted it to because it's real quick. Again, I might do a tutorial on that tulip. If you're interested in that, leave a comment below. Or if you have any questions on specific things, um, again, Cartesian's Carmel for the actual mimic effect, where it goes into detail on how to make it and explain it and use it in a, for like the mimic thing. Or even if you just want to kind of use it like this, um, is also going to be both in the i cards and in the description as well, because that's the main built of this uh, render, the main the main thing in it. Um, and just a different way to use it. So credit to him. It's a great effect. I really love it. Um, it's really simple, really straightforward. And as you can see, it's got a ton of uses um, uh, beyond just like the mimic idea. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoy this. Hope you learn something. Hope you have some ideas for any uh, renders, geometry nodes or no that you might want to make yourselves. Uh, and if you like this video, leave a like. Uh, if you want to see more of these uh, overviews for my nodes for these uh, November 2022 series, uh, make sure to subscribe. Or if you just want general tutorials, make sure to subscribe. And I'll uh, catch you next time. Peace.